Elliot, you are the CEO of two cows. Why only two cows? Why not three cows? You know, what the hell of a name of a company it is two cows? So are you making cheese, milk? What is your product? I, I, I have to start by saying, Yossi, you'll notice. So I'm going to do this publicly now with some hope. You'll notice nobody laughed. Yossi's been making that joke for 20 years. And still, you see, it doesn't work. It works very well. Anybody who is not going to laugh is not going to be invited to next DLD. <laughs> Elliot, what kind of a name is Two Cows? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I mean, there are uh, a lot the of... Ultimate the collection ultimate collection of, of Winsock software. software. Very good. Can yeah. you explain? Nobody yeah, understands. Yeah, sure. I, I mean, our roots and, uh, and the reason that Yossi uh, uh, really has, you know, been so so sweet to me for so long uh, is our roots were in uh, software distribution. We had one of the largest uh, download sites on the internet, doing shareware and trialware and freeware. And uh, you know, Yossi got his start in tech because he had a uh, three careers before that. Um, with ICQ, you know, where he I invented... I about two cows, not about I, I understand, but, but, you know, our, 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 our origins are interlinked, Yossi. Yeah. So, you know, you, you're going to have to hear it. You know, Yossi Forget invented about instant tell, messaging. I didn't invent anything. And, and we were lucky <laughs> enough to have a download site that because talking. he was cheap and didn't want to pay for bandwidth for his downloads, you know, he put on our free site. Now, very quickly, it became the biggest, most popular uh, piece of software in the world. Drove a ton of page views for us and a bunch of other people. And, you know, so that's, that's where we met. This is how we, we met. met. But what, what uh, since he talk and talk, but he didn't give you any answer, Elliot was probably one of the first, or the very first, what is called to the store, what you call uh, on mobile store was on the PC before there were mobile phones. It was a site where you could go and download any piece of software which was downloadable. And we as a small company, instead of putting servers to download from us, anybody who came to us, ICQ, to download the product, we put a link which sent to their site. But don't think that they were so nice guys. He speak as if he was giving away bandwidth. He referred the people who came to his sites to download sites on the servers of universities. True or not? Well, they were ISPs mostly, but there were lots of universities in there. I mean, you know, in the early days of the internet, and you know, we've got a, a good global audience here. I mean, bandwidth was relatively speaking, plentiful in North America, but in the rest of the world, not at all. And we had, uh, we had our download libraries in over a thousand networks around the world in over a hundred countries, you know, at a time and place where that was kind of unique. We are now talking about the late 90s, and the whole thing started by a guy in the center of the internet city of... Uh, Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan. To those of you who don't know where is Flint, Michigan, to some of us, Flint, Michigan is a very important place because not far from Flint, Michigan, in Ar Ann, Ann Arbor, what exists in Ann Arbor? That's right. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, well, well what, it, what is there oh, well, which is Ann important? Ann Arbor is University of Michigan. No, that's for you maybe. For me, it's Zingerman. Do you know what is Zingerman? <laughs> no. Anybody know what is Zingerman? Raise your hand. Look at that. Zingerman is the deli shop in North America that you can buy chopped liver before Christmas and ship it to your friends instead of this fruitcake that... I have learned. You, ne you never knew it? I never knew that. So this is Zingerman, Flint, Michigan. What, what else was in the area? University of Arbor, Arbor. <coughs> Ford. And Scott... Uh, Scott Swarovski, yeah. Scott Swarovski, who came with this idea. So, yeah. <coughs> again, the year is 98. Oh, wow, that was 93. 93. You know, you and I first met in 97. Yeah. Okay, we have to move a little bit further. Yeah. Nevertheless, this guy, this kid, how old he was then? 
Me? No, you. You. Oh, are. Scott was in his twenties. Yeah, and <coughs> I was still. He you know, went. Not young. He went. He actually didn't. We went. He didn't go. We sent email to many, many ISPs. I thought you said we had to move it along. Yeah, we move. Yeah, okay. We move forward, backward. <laughs> so, he contacted a lot of ISPs. He put servers in the ISPs, <coughs> and anybody wanted to download. Came to the ISP, the ISP downloaded the software from locally instead of going back up to Flint, Michigan and having all the hopes. And at that time, the internet <coughs> backbone was made of chewing gum, duct tape. And yes. yes. So there were a lot of, uh, lot of interruption this way. It's reduced the interruption, it reduced the hope, it reduced the Well, cost. if you download, I'm sure a lot of you remember downloading a browser in the mid-90s, late-90s, a three, three-and-a-half-hour download. If it dropped in the middle, it started again. So this was their business. The only problem is they had the business that they didn't have any revenue. Yeah, no, that was you, Yossi. We okay. had revenue. ICQ had no revenue. We had revenue. Okay, this will explain to you the next chapter. They had revenue, we didn't have revenue. And then one day this guy wake up and come to us with a unheard of cruel demand of what? Well, so Yossi, you know, it's very important in this era. There was a couple panels ago, there was the great uh, uh, talk about uh, the, en the enlightenment and, and relative truth. So what Yossi's telling now is an alternative set of facts. It's an alternative truth. I'll, I'm going to tell the real story again. We had a, uh, you know, and I, I, I hope this uh, doesn't get broadcast too broadly, but, you know, we were inside of an ISP. Uh, the owner um, used to, uh, on Friday, mid to late afternoon, he had a fantastic scotch collection and he would it was generally really sample Friday. it. It was Friday. And, and, and uh, you know, the guys who, see, what Yossi's people used to do, I mean, they were getting free downloads from us. They... What do you mean free downloads? We sent you traffic. Yes. Nobody went to your site. Yes, yes. We, we heard that part. And they would make demands on us. They would, they would scream and yell at us when we didn't give them information, when we, when we took a mirror down or somebody changed something. And uh, one of the guys who ran the website came in, complained to the owner who, who was you know, it was on a time? Friday afternoon and it's not the right time to complain. And he said, screw them. He didn't say you so. tell them right now that either they pay us $1,000 or we're taking them down. $1,000, $1,000 per download, not per download. No, per month. Per month. Per month. $1,000 per month. We thought this is outrageous fee because we didn't have any income. That's because right. And when, and when I found out about it, I knew it was a bad piece of business, and I immediately told them to stop, but it had already been done, and the DNS started to propagate. So the DNS started to propagate, to propagate and every 15 minutes, the guys in Israel running to me and say, we lost download in Russia. Now we lost download in Moscow. Now we lost download in Fiji Islands. Now we lost... Download because of the greed of these Canadian guys who wanted to us to pay one thousand dollars a month. Yes, this yes. was ninety ninety seven. That was ninety seven. Yeah, so so I had to get Yossi on the phone, and uh, and we we spent the first twenty minutes of the call screaming, screaming. Yes, uh, you yes. hear the results until now. Yeah, <clears throat> actually. Yeah. Actually, there was actually there was a side part of the story, you know, that I've never told. Yossi's yelling at me for five minutes, and, and it's on speaker, and the guy who shared the office with me is just beside himself, and I'm smiling, and he says, what's going on? And, and people in the hall were starting to gather, so I got up, and I closed the door, and I've got kind of our side on mute, and I said, you know, don't worry, he's Israeli, I know what to do, and then I put the thing back on off of mute and started yelling back at him about his unreasonable demands and how could he, and then we became friends. So we got a service provider that not only wanted us to pay, but also screamed on us. Yes, yes. And look where it got us, Yossi. Okay, so we became good friends. We will jump all the Syrian part of it. And yeah, it's, it's very politically incorrect right yeah. now. Yeah, now, so you have this great idea of putting servers at the ISP in order to uh, make the 
the prov to, to provide fast, fast and cheap. And cheap. This is a great concept. Yes. A great technical concept. Yes. Who implemented the concept at the end of the day? Well, as you've told me again for 20 years, Akamai. Akamai. So Akamai took the concept that they came with and made a real big companies. Yes. So if you would have done it, you, were, you would have now run a company like Akamai. Yeah, that's okay. And instead? Yeah. Instead, I've got to spend the, the next 20 years caring and feeding for and helping the open internet and, and, and having nice investors like you, Yossi. Go. So tell us, tell us now what two cows... Uh, yeah, I mean, our business, you know, we were lucky enough to, to jump from the, uh, uh, you know, that ad-supported stuff to, uh, well, to get into domain registration, helping just, ISPs all over the world. Just, just, just okay. a minute, just a minute. Let me, oh. let me reframe the discussion. You're watching the time, <laughs> right? No, uh, time, time is a relative thing. Ask Einstein, you know. The, this guy is doing this thing of actually facilitating the internet for the last 20, 96 to 2020. It's 20, it's 20. 20 yeah. 21 years. What, 20, uh, yeah. 20 years, and he really saw it from the time where really things were done in a very, impro in improvising the internet to something like this. And through the way he led uh, two cows, you can have really a snapshot or a fast-moving fast moving video what really developed in the internet. So tell us how two cows developed maybe every two, well, three years. You know, I, I'm, I'm just going to say at the highest level, we're a large domain registrar now. We're the second largest in the world behind GoDaddy. And that's really just by partnering with web hosting companies and ISPs all over the world. You know, our roots are in telecom as dial -up, from the dial-up ISP days. Um, and that led us to take what we did well, launch a uh, mobile phone service in the US that's at, called at Ting. What year, at what year did you launch that? Uh, we launched that about five years ago. Um, and, and we took what we did there and we've started to do fiber to the home. And so I think let that that's, me, okay, you good? So you started with downloads. Yep. Then you move into domain registration. Yep. What year? 2000, as competition came. So 99, 2000. 99, 2000, yeah. you moved into, you added it as another layer. Yes. Then you went... Lucky for your investment at the time, by the way. I'm not complaining. Because we were in the dot-com bust, and if not, we I'm were not, done. I'm yeah. not complaining. I'm not, to those who didn't understand, I, since I, I, I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, wrestle with this guy, we arranged a group which bought the company. Yeah, and, and... Which, was, which was very, very good for us, but most of my partners sold away. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, you're the only one that hung around, Yossi. Yeah, and, and yeah. Luck, luckily. Yeah, I think what happened was Yossi made an investment. He forgot about it. Everybody else remembered, <laughs> sold their pieces out. And then one day, many years later, he so remembered. You're, so, by the way, I don't know if there is a company or we just tell story because I've never been there. I didn't kick the tires, but Brad Burnham, Burnham told me there is a company. Yes. So it's not just a story. It's okay. True. It's so true. So you moved, you moved from download to registrar, domains. How did you see the domain market growing? You know, look, I, I'm going to jump just because of time, Yossi, and because I think it'll be most interesting to people here. You know, we're doing fiber to the home now, and I think what's important then is... Then the guy got megalomaniac and he decided he's going to put Google out of business. <laughs> Tell us about it. The, yeah. No, the, 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 the only Google... Well, we'll never do any... Uh, we'll never put Google out of any business. You know, Google, I think, has chosen to slow down what they're doing in fiber, but um, you know, I think it's important uh, to recognize we're at a very unique time and place in telecom, particularly in North America, where uh, we're going to see a revolution in the next 15 years. We're going to move really all over the world from a very small percentage of homes having fiber to the home connections to just about every home. You know, you'll hear a lot about wireless it will never be a replacement for 
a full fiber connection to the home. And, 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 why you, I went, think and you went to this business. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I think that, that the best, first of all, the, the, it's, it's the fact that they'll let me, they'll let our company own fiber infrastructure is remarkable to me. Yeah, that's you know, amazing. Where we can be the monopolist for the next, you know, 100 years, 150 years. And I really put it like that because I think that, you know, there's, there's something going on that we don't recognize, which is that with internet infrastructure, Fiber is the first purpose-built infrastructure for the internet. You know, we live in a world where we're all here talking about the internet. It's delivered on infrastructure built for you telephones like, like and televisions, and it deserves and needs its own purpose-built infrastructure. You sound like evangelist, not like a CEO, you know. Yeah, that's okay. Now, in your current rate of deployment, yes. I want a true answer. I sure. Give you I give you 10 seconds to calculate. Yep. In your current rate of deployment, yep. how long it will take you to cover the world with fiber? Well, first of all, we're looking to cover the U.S., and I know you're counting down, but what I will tell you is we're going to set a model in the U.S. for hundreds, maybe thousands of co companies to copy, and then you'll see it done in 10 or 15 years. There are parts of Europe where there is great fiber infrastructure, and in most of Europe, it's crappy, but it's still better than North America. You know, we, we are way behind the Asian countries. You know, in the U.S., so first of all, Japan and Korea are full of fiber to the home. You know, I, I, when I was in Korea about three, four years ago, Koreans would talk about coming over to the U.S. as a vacation because they didn't have internet access when they were here. That was literally the difference for them between their lives on fiber and being here. In the US, there are roughly 100 million homes. Last year, China laid fiber to 100 million homes. So it's embarrassing. And you are going to fix it. No, uh, I think we can, we can do what little tiny part we can do, but what we can demonstrably do is demonstrate, what we can do is show that you can make money doing this. And the one thing that the internet is great at is as a copying machine. Tell me, you merge with uh, another, uh, let, me, let me go back from fiber, and uh, really we have to wrap it up. It's really moved too much, very fast because I'm talking too much. Uh, tell us a little bit about domains. What do you see in the domains field? There's a proxy to what's happening in the internet. You know, you see consistent, reliable growth with domains. And again, like, like much of the rest of the world, there's a bubble for domains in China. But I, you know, I, I want to uh, uh, just note that, that all of that, you know, what, what, the inter what the domains are, are the one possible platform for user-centric distributed identity. We have a world now where control of data is probably the most strategic thing. You saw it discussed on a number of other panels here. We know it is the choke point. There is no question that tools need be advanced that help us all control our own data. And domains sit right at the center, using internet protocols, of the opportunity for user-controlled, decentralized identity. It's a big and sentence. one last word, we have 29 seconds. Can you tell us where the whole ICANN debate is standing, or what it's resolved, or it's still open, or who's yeah, going know, to control it? Sure, when you say who's going to control it, uh, you know, with ICANN, which is the regulator for domain names, you will have, you have today, the first and only example of global governance. People talk about something like the United Nations. That is international. It's between countries. This is truly a case where the countries have ceded power to a multi-stakeholder model. And I think we're going to see that uh, 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 multiplied in things like dealing with gl real global issues like taxation, trade, law enforcement, and a bunch of others. You know, how else will you get rid of global, how else will you deal with the fact we're not going to be eating fish in 20 years unless it's done on a global basis at a multi-stakeholder level? So I close with that dark note so, that we won't be eating fish so in 20 can years. So can we, can we assume that uh, your company is moving from cows into fish? Cows into fish.
That's it. It will be two. And then you'll make three fish jokes. Two, three cheese, three fish. What am I going to do? Where, last question, where the internet is going? You saw it really for 25 years, where it's going? Yeah, I, I, I think there's going to be, we're going to be able to control our own data, and when we can do that, the experience has become fundamentally different. You know, think about the data, the geographical data around driverless cars in cities. Cities should be the ones who control their data. And this is where you see. Okay, uh, Elliot, it was always fun to, to do things to, uh, with you, and I'm looking forward for the next uh, Thank 20 Thank you for staying years. up, Yossi. Steffi, please invite us <laughs> to DLD 2037. We will have another fire chat. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.